Hi, everyone, and welcome to our 2015 UAE and KSA Talent Trends Report live webcast. We are very happy to have you. My name is Zena Haymoush, and I'm the marketing coordinator here in Armina office. I'm very excited to be joined today by two of our experts, Stephanie Fernandez, our UAE sales manager, and Mohamed Khassane, our Saudi territory manager. Today we will be walking you through the results of the Talent Trends Report for both UAE and Saudi. Now before we get started, I just want to go over some housekeeping rules. You can hear us, but we can't hear you. You can't see other attendees, so don't worry, you are not alone on the call. If you have any trouble with audio, please send me all your questions in the chat box. We will be sending out the recording and the presentation tomorrow, so don't worry about taking notes. And finally, if you have questions for our presenters, please send them to myself in the chat box, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the webcast. On today's agenda, we plan to cover the following topics. I will start off by giving you a bit of background about the research and... So if everyone can just mute their line, that would be great, so we don't get any feedback on the line. Thank you. So as I was saying, I will start off by giving you a bit of background about the research and the methodology behind it. Then Stephanie and Hamad will walk you through the findings in terms of the different stages of the job search journey. Now just to give you some background before diving into the data. LinkedIn's Talent Trends survey was conducted in February and March of 2015. LinkedIn collected survey responses for 20,000 LinkedIn members in 29 countries, including 600 professionals in the UAE and more than 700 professionals in KSA. We wanted to better understand their attitudes and behaviors from their first encounter with a job opportunity through accepting an offer. Now, in the coming few minutes, we invite you to step inside the mind of UAE and KSA talent at every stage of the job search journey. I will now hand it over to Stephanie, who will start exploring the beginning stages with you. Thank you, Zaina, and good morning, everybody. So, as Zaina already stated, I will start off by talking about the talent landscape in 2015 and the type of talent we are looking at. One way that we use at LinkedIn to differentiate talent is to classify them as either active or passive. Active candidates may be actively looking for a job or just looking a few times a week. Passive candidates, on the other hand, may be reaching out to their personal network, open to talking to a recruiter, or they may be completely satisfied and therefore don't want to move jobs. What the results show us is that professionals in the UAE and Saudi are more likely to seek new job opportunities than professionals in other parts of the world, meaning the percentage of active candidates in these countries is actually higher than the global percentage. This is very good news for all of you who are hiring in the region, as you can clearly see that candidates want to engage with your company and are eager to find their dream jobs. Now, as the global economy improves, more professionals want to explore new job opportunities, regardless of how satisfied they feel in their current role. This means that active talent doesn't necessarily mean unhappy talent, and this is exactly what you see here on the slide. In fact, 48% of active candidates globally are satisfied with their current job. Their motivation to look for new opportunities comes from their desire to grow as professionals and take on new challenges. If we look at passive, passive talent, we see the same story. They are satisfied with their job, but that doesn't mean that if the right opportunity came along, they wouldn't consider it. The difference between the way you approach active and passive talent is that in order to catch passive talent's attention, you need to do so with your talent brand and proactively reach out with new opportunities instead of hoping for them to come to you. We now move on to our second topic, talent behavior. How does talent behave when looking for a new job opportunity and where do they go? 
One thing that professionals are constantly doing is improving their professional brand. It's important to note, however, that their personal brand can also make the difference between attracting and losing the interest of top employers. If professionals are not actively communicating their achievements and personality in a way that companies can easily see, they're losing out to those candidates who are. Here are some of the most common developmental activities from a global perspective that candidates engaged in between February and March of this year. The top two, with 39% each, are researching job opportunities and updating their resume, followed by networking for professional purposes at 38% and updating their profile on LinkedIn at 35%. Exploring new skills also appears to be a popular one. Professionals, as I said before, tend to, tend to like to take on new challenges and grow their career. And in order to do that, they need to make sure they are always adding new achievements to their portfolio, as well as learning new skills that will help them achieve it. So now we know what the top talent behaviours are. And if you recall, the number one was finding new opportunities. So now let's explore where these candidates go to locate them. For the UAE, the winning channel is social professional networks, like LinkedIn, coming in at 63%. For Saudi Arabia, on the other hand, we see that online job boards are still a highly utilised channel, and that social professional networks come in second place. This difference is mainly because of the penetration level of such platforms in these different regions. In the UAE, LinkedIn, for example, has a higher penetration of members than in Saudi. There are also many other channels that are being used, such as corporate websites, word of mouth, and professional groups. Whichever method is being used, we notice that the top ones are usually the same in both countries which means that you, as an employer, need to make sure that you are present wherever your potential candidates are. Having a company page as well as a career page on platforms such as LinkedIn, for example, is therefore crucial. We have now understood where professionals look for job opportunities, but how do we engage with them and start up a The next time you hesitate or are in doubt about reaching out to new talent, remember that most professionals in the UAE and Saudi are interested in hearing about job opportunities. 86% of UAE professionals and 87% of Saudi professionals are interested to hear from recruiters or headhunters, which means that you should never miss an opportunity to communicate your new job openings. The same is true of talent globally, where the percentage is actually 78%. So don't be afraid to be proactive in your approach, as it can only generate positive results. You now know what professionals want to hear from you. So now it's time to find out what they actually want to hear about. When you first reach out to professionals about a new opportunity, be sure to explain the role's responsibilities and let them know why you feel they're a good fit for the role. Understanding the role they are expected to deliver, to deliver is one of the most important things for professionals globally. Other valuable factors to communicate are the reason why you are reaching out as well as the estimated salary range. So the next time you want to contact a potential candidate, make sure to include at least two of the things that you see in this slide in your communication. Inmails are a great way to reach out to talents on LinkedIn. Here are some helpful inmail tips that will help you when drafting your communication. First, reach out to your existing followers. Your LinkedIn company page followers are actually 81% more likely to respond to your email than those who do not follow you. Second, don't mix work and the weekend. 
In mail messages, sent on Saturdays, for example, are 16% less likely to get a response than those sent during the working week. And finally, the closer it is to the weekend, the less likely talent is to respond. In mails sent on Thursdays between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. are 12% more likely to get a response than those sent on Fridays around the same time. I will now hand over to Mohammed, who will walk you through the remaining two stages. Thank you, Stephanie. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. As you have seen, Stephanie walked you through the stages happening before meeting your candidates. I will finish it off with the interview experience and reaching the final decision. It might be surprising to you, but no matter how well you pitch a job, nearly all professionals are still unsure about the job and the company when they show up for the interview. Getting the interview right will win you top talent, while getting it wrong can hurt your recruiting efforts. As you can see, 83% of talent say a negative interview experience can change their minds about a role or a company they like, and vice versa. 87% will change their mind in a role or a company they had doubts when having a positive interview experience. The interview is your chance to make a lasting impression on your candidates. Even if you end up going with someone else, these candidates will tell others about the experience they had and the word would spread in their networks. Now, you might be asking if the interview will really have an impact on the final decision. Well, talent speaks loud and clear. The interview experience is a major factor in whether talent joins your organization or continues on their job search journey. 77% of professionals globally agree that it is a major factor that will allow them to make their final decision. One tip I would like to share with you here, if you are losing candidates after the interview phase, then gather your team, hiring managers, and your partners in HR brainstorm how to work together to creating a positive and memorable experience for every candidate you interview. We all know that War for Talent is on, so to stand out as an organization and attract great talent, make sure you deliver what matters most during the interview experience, since we just noticed how impactful that can be. One thing that you should consider who talent want to meet on the interview day? The answer is very clear here. For both UAE and Saudi professionals, it's the prospective manager. It's crucial for candidates to know who they will be working with and reporting to. So make sure your candidates are getting the chance to meet their future manager on day one. That is of the most important relationships they will build. The second thing to consider is what matters to professionals on the interview day itself. What can you offer them to make their experience a memorable and a positive one? The survey shows that having a conversation with leadership is what candidates want the most, both in UAE and Saudi. The two other valuable experiences for them are getting business questions answered, and receiving interview follow-ups. So make sure to, to conduct proper follow-up calls, answer all their concerns, and allow them to experience your company's culture, which can add a lot of value. So following up after an interview is what will differentiate your organization from the competition. So don't go quiet after interview day. Candidates want to hear back after the interview. They are expecting to hear feedback and updates about their application. Even if it's sharing the bad news of not being selected for the position, any feedback is better than none. Always remember that. 59% of professionals would prefer you get in touch with them whenever you have an update, positive or negative, while 42% would only would want to be contacted if you plan on extending an offer to them. Now it's time for the final decision. What do candidates look for in order to accept 
or reject an offer. When a candidate is considering a job offer, there are factors that matter a lot and others that hardly matter at all. Increase your candidate acceptance rate by knowing the difference. The factors that seem to matter the most for UAE and Saudi professionals to consider a job offer are compensation and the opportunity for a better professional development. Also, 94% of talent says being contacted by their prospective manager can make them accept a job offer faster. Now, when it, when it comes to negotiating salaries, most professionals rely on their own judgment to determine a fair salary. Set realistic expectations and answer questions honestly about the job's responsibilities and workloads, so candidates could determine a fair salary range for them. The goal of any salary negotiation is to offer a fair price, maintain an open mind, and open all and above all, make the candidate feel valued. I wanted to end this webcast by sharing with you a few quotes from the respondents of a survey on what frustrates them the most in their job search journey. Check out the first one. Recruiting is like getting married with only meeting your future spouse a few times. I'd like to see multi-day, hands-on, working interviews to really see whether there is a good fit. Finally, we hope this webcast has given you new insights into what talent wants throughout the job search journey and provided you with a few new ideas incorporate into your recruiting strategy. Here are five ways to start using the data in this report today. One, invest in the channels that talent uses to discover opportunities. Two, include the most impactful information in your initial messages to candidates. Three, partner with hiring managers and leadership team to create a great interview experience. Four, keep in touch consistently with candidates after the interview experience. Five, focus on what factors matters most to talent when considering a job offer. The best way for you to discover what talent wants is simply to ask. We're confident that doing so will yield stronger candidate relationships and ultimately better, happier clients. Thank you, Hamad and Stephanie. We will now be taking any questions, so please write them down in the chat box, and Stephanie and Hamad will be happy to answer. Okay, one question that we have here for Stephanie. Uh, so Karim is asking if it's worth going after passive talent if they're already satisfied with their current position. So the answer to that is um, yes, it's still definitely worth going uh, after passive talent. Um, the key is keeping in contact with them in a uh, relevant uh, and engaging way. So. At the end of the day, just because someone is happy in their current job doesn't mean that they wouldn't be open to the right kind of opportunity. So it's definitely worth keeping them warm. They might just be a little bit slower to move. Okay. Another one here, I think addressed from Hamad. So they're asking why is it important for, for candidates to meet their future manager? Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, well, actually, it is important for them to meet their uh, future manager because it's the relationship that will stand out throughout their career uh, within the organization. So knowing how that relationship will start and begin and the, the chemistry that will happen between the uh, future candidate and the manager is really important for them and to help them into making a faster decision by accepting the company. 
another thing that we have realized okay, throughout uh, our solution is uh, the success rate happening with the uh, candidates when they involve the hiring managers from day one. So including the hiring managers through our solutions by using the hiring manager seat and management and collaboration is really leading to uh, positive results and faster hires for them. Uh, another uh, question that we have here, uh, so Natalie is asking us if it's important to ask candidates for feedback, so after the interview, uh, understand from them what they think. Is it important? Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. So it, it's always a two-way conversation, right? Remember when uh, candidates are coming in to interview, they're also assessing you as an organization. It's not a given that they're definitely going to take the job should you put the offer out. So. Um, definitely um, get them to, to tell you how they think it went, um, as well as obviously give them the opportunity to, to ask how, how they did. So yeah, we would positively encourage having that two-way conversation. Okay, and one last question I have here. Is how important is it uh, is the induction process in both UAE and uh, South? It's very important. Thank you for that question. I'm just kidding. So, so it, it, it is very important because, uh, uh, you know, induction process, you need the candidates to come and hit the ground running. So making sure that they are up to speed with uh, your, uh, um, let's say, processes and uh, your expectations, your products, or wh whatever you're trying to fulfill uh, that position for, is really important to help candidates really, uh, let's say, you know, uh, be involved immediately from day one, the company's culture, in the uh, processes, and feel at home as soon as you start. And it's especially important as well in, in the UAE territory where companies typically will hire from all sorts of different nationalities as well. So ensuring that, that the cultural aspect of, uh, of, of the company is firmly put in place with regard to the induction process. One last question I think that we're going to take here is uh, what special words can be used in introduction that seem more positive and attractive for hiring managers? So what can hiring managers say? It's about acknowledgement and it's about making things personal. So words like feel, words like agree, words like uh, questions for them, you know, what, what are your thoughts around it? Um, there, there are lots of ways. I guess it really depends on the type of role you're trying to hire for, depending on the seniority of the level, um, and also how big your talent pool is. You need to make sure that you're differentiating yourself from the rest. Well, thank you all for joining us, and please look out for the follow-up emails because the recording of this presentation will be there, and we will also be sending you the link to both the reports that we talked about, so you would really have the chance to dig into the data and go through each report uh, separately. Uh, thank you all for joining and have a lovely day.